Today, let us discuss about uh, ventricular premature complexes or ventricular ectopics. Now, ventricular ectopic means it is not originated from the SA node. You know that when, when uh, in heart uh, the electrical activity starts from the SA node, it goes to the AV node, then goes to the bundle of his, then uh, to the ventricles like this. So, there is a normal pathway in our heart, but actually when this atrial uh, uh, part of the conduction system, when it is not working due to some reason, you can get a ventricular activation. So, you can see here uh, for atrial activation, P waves forms, then the conduction takes place, PR enrolled occurs, then QRS complex occurs. That is the ventricular activation actually. So, here what is happening is this part is not happening and uh, there is no P wave, but there is a QRS complex that is a ventricular activation. But that ventricular activation is slightly different from this ventricular activation, which is a normal. This is slightly delayed. That is because when the conduction occurs through this normal pathway, you get narrow QRS complex. That is very important. When the conduction occurs from here, it has to go to the uh, regular pathway. Then it has to conduct. So it will become slightly wider in this case. So that's what you are seeing here. There is an ectopic beat. So, ectopic beat means there are two types of ectopics we should understand. One is atrial ectopic, other one is ventricular ectopic. So, you can see here the QRS complex is always void in uh, ventricular ectopic. There is no P wave. So, there is no P wave. Here normally P wave has to be there, but there is no P wave. Normally it has to be narrow, QRS has to be narrow, but here has, it has become wide. So, that is a problem in ventricular premature complex or ventricular ectopic. So, these impulses are originating from the area which is higher from the uh, bundle of his that, that you can see atrium uh, produces normal conduction then it would, this is SA node, this is AV node, then from AV node it goes to the ventricle. But this part is not working due to some reason then it has come from the conduction has come from this area and it will go to the regular conduction pathway. So, it is wide. So, that is a problem in uh, ventricular premature complex. So, what you are seeing here in this ECG complex, this is normal uh, QRS complex, normal QRS complex, normal QRS complex, here also normal QRS complex, normal QRS complex. Normal QRS complex means there is a regular P wave, there is a PR enrolled, there is a narrow QRS complex. But what we are seeing here is there is no P wave that is not there, that is because it is not originated from the atrium then you have a, uh, a wide QRS complex. So, that is a premature ventricular complex. Now, what, I, what you are seeing in this ECG is this is a normal QRS complex, normal QRS complex, but here it is uh, an ectopic beat. So, what happens here is when there is an ectopic complex, you have a compensatory pause. That means normally here suppose there is a QRS complex here, there is a QRS complex is this normal QRS complex has to come here. So, that QRS complex is slightly coming earlier. So, this is a no normal QRS complex, this is a normal QRS complex. The, the distance between these two bracket QRS complex will be always same as the original one. So, that is called as compensatory pause. In compensatory pause, in ventricular premature complex has to be a complete compensatory pause, whereas in atrial uh, ectopic that may not be seen. Okay, that we are not discussing now. So, ventricular premature complexes, all, all ventricular premature complexes will have a complete compensatory pause. That's how we understand that is ventricular premature complex. Okay, now uh, this is actually a treadmill as I just shown this figure to make you understand. See, normally in emergency room, what is the problem is we see a lot of patients who have ectopic complexes, ectopic ventricular premature complexes. Sometimes it can be a normal problem. Normal problem means it, it may be a normal phenomenon, but sometimes it can be abnormal. So, as an emergency physician, I should know whether it is a normal phenomenon or an abnormal problem. Okay. If it is a problematic ectopic, most of the time patient can have electrolyte imbalance, pain can have chest pain, palpitation, breathing difficulty, all these things are there. But how do you know that this is abnormal or normal? For that, we have to ask the patient to walk for some time. Okay, when you have an ectopic, ask the patient for uh, uh, a few distance, like uh, six minutes or ten minutes. Ask them to walk. Initially, you are seeing one or two ectopic. 
suppose the number of ectopic increases then this ectopic is a problematic ectopic but after working if it is coming down then no need to worry it's a benign problem so nothing to uh, document this is an ectopic which can be occurring during resting period but when you are exerting the heart is becoming normal and the ectopic uh, are disappearing that means it's a normal problem normal phenomenon but if the numbers are increasing then it is abnormal that is one way of uh, knowing whether it is normal or abnormal other things are see once in a while if you are seeing an ectopic in an ecg that is not a issue but if the ectopics are having different morphologies polymorphic ectopic that is a diff that is a big problem any patient is having polymorphic ectopic that can be problematic so you know why it is problematic because we have seen that ectopic means from one focus there is an abnormal electric current so that produces unifocal ectopic but if the patient is having another focus one more focus is all ectopics will be different morphology okay so when you are seeing multiple morphology of ectopic even if it is one or two it has to be dangerous okay so one way to know whether ectopic are dangerous or not ask the patient to walk for few minutes repeat the ecg if the ectopic numbers are coming down or disappearing from the ecg then that is a benign ectopic if you are seeing multiple morphology of ectopic even if you, if if the numbers are very low that is a problematic ectopic another problem is alternating ectopic this is a normal complex next is an ectopic so normal complex next is an ectopic okay that is called as bigeminy that is also problematic okay so there are different uh, problems uh, the problematic ectopics you can see no uh, many patients who have ectopics like uh, whether it is abnormal or normal why we are worried about this ectopic ectopic means there is a problem in the conduction system it can be due to electrolyte imbalance it can be can be due to blood supply it can be due to a problem in the conduction system whatever it is when you have ectopic one or two ectopic it's not a problem but if they are continuously coming like this more than 3 if they are coming continuously you get ectopic then it will become ventricular tachycardia that is a problematic thing so normally if you are seeing one or two ectopic in an ecg if the patient is not symptomatic it is not a issue but if the numbers are increasing and if the patient is having symptoms like palpitation giddiness dizziness sweating then it can be a uh, problematic and again if the uh, ectopic is continuously coming like this in a row more than 3 and it is persisting then it will become pt so that is a dangerous situation so we should know ectopics whether the numbers are normal whether the numbers are coming down after uh, insertion or if they are multi uh, multifocal or polymorphic ectopic if they are coming repeatedly after a regular interval then also all these things are dangerous ectopics now we can see the causes for ectopic but in emergency room most of the time we get ectopic in ischemic heart disease it can be infarction or uh, ischemic heart disease some valvular heart disease you can get uh, ectopics then uh, especially mitral valve prolapse so mitral valve prolapse is one condition where you can have uh, patient all individual with palpitation anxiety tachycardia they can have ectopics very frequently and there are lot of other conditions which can produce ectopics valvular heart disease like mitral regurgitation aortic regurgitation all these patients can have ectopics cardiomyopathy myocardial stretch cardiac contusion that is after trauma some bradycardia tachycardia high catecholamine state then most important thing for an icu uh, doctor it is electrolyte imbalance hypokalemia hypomagnesemia and hypercalcemia and there are other uh, electrolytes also can produce ectopics some drugs like digoxin antidepressants aminophilin uh, all these things also can produce ectopic aminophilin is a very good drug which can be used in uh, 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 like uh, asthma or COPD but nowadays the usage is coming down because of the same problem because this drug has got a very narrow therapeutic index so any time this is a very good drug for to uh, dilate the bronchus it increases the tonicity of diaphragm it increases the cardiac output but unfortunately this drug can produce ventricular tachycardia or vpc so nowadays the usage is coming down
pseudoephedrine is a one drug which is very commonly used in anti cold medicine that's why many patients who is having hypertension or heart disease we avoid uh, the drugs containing pseudoephedrine or phenylephrine cocaine amphetamine all these things are recreational drugs so they also can produce uh, various uh, uh, types of ectopic another important problem in uh, our icu is stress okay many patients after trauma surgery infections all these patients can have stress induced cardiac problem so they can have ectopics okay now we have already discussed how to know whether it's a ventricular premature complex or atrial premature complex ventricular premature complex there is no p wave here you can see a normal complex p waves are there but in ectopic it's a t wave it's not a p wave there is no p wave now p is a important feature of ventricular ectopic and see these ectopics are wide complexes because we have already seen it in the conduction system if it is coming through the regular conduction system qrs will be narrow if it is coming from another focus it has to go to the regular conduction system and it can go to the uh, bundle of his then it will become wide that's why ventricular premature complex are always wide and see here atrial premature complexes they have p wave so these are ectopic p waves are there but the p wave morphology is different that's all because normally it comes from the conduction stem regularly you, you get a regular p wave suppose it is coming from another area and the morphology will be slightly different okay so p waves are there but morphology is different and qrs complex are narrow okay there are two major differences between ventricular premature complex and atrial premature complex so there is no p wave here wide qrs complex there is p wave here but the morphology is different and narrow qrs complex no unifocal or multifocal vpcs we have already seen that so unifocal vpcs when the numbers are low and if the numbers are coming down after exertion they are benign if the numbers are high or numbers are increasing after exertion even unifocal ectopics are abnormal but whereas multifocal ectopics are always dangerous why we have already seen that see the ecto s node a node then you have bundle of his unifocal ectopic means always the ectopic is coming from the same focus there is a small problem in that area alone but if you have multifocal ectopics all this will have a different morphology so different morphology ectopics even if the numbers are very low then it has to be dangerous that means multiple areas in the heart is abnormal so any time this patient can go to multifocal ventricular uh, 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 tachycardia sometimes we call it as torsadis point is so all these things can occur so we have to be very careful when we are giving getting multifocal ectopics so these two ectopics are having similar morphology but look at this uh, this is a, a different morphology it's more positive this is more negative that means they are coming from different focus so they are called as multifocal vpcs so here also you can see multifocal vpcs so remember these ectopics are always dangerous there is a problem behind this ectopic so we have to evaluate we have to advise the patient to take complete rest now by gemini tri gemini quadri gemini all these things are also important so here you can see this is a normal complex This is a normal complex. This is a normal complex, but in between, what you are seeing is an ectopic. Okay, so ectopics coming alternatively, they are called as ventricular bigeminal. So it is very important to remember the name ventricular bigeminal. But if they are coming in a row, the two ectopics coming in a row, then normal complex. Before that, also normal complex. They are co called as couplets. Okay. so that name difference you should remember this is bigeminal alternating uh, ectopics alternating ventricular ectopics they are very very dangerous many electro electrolyte abnormalities degauss in toxicity and this can sometimes a precursor for ventricular tachycardia okay here also you can see why these are complexes alternatively coming so they are called as bigeminal so here alternatively you are getting ectopic can see here so it is bigeminal so uh, uh, the important question is we are seeing only very few numbers in a ecg but they are coming alternatively is it dangerous it is dangerous okay so we should be uh, we should remember all these things then trigeminal that is also dangerous 
So here the problem is two normal complexes, one ectopic. Two normal complexes, one ectopic. That is trigeminic. Then quadrigemini. Quadrigemini means four normal complexes, then ectopic. But all these things are normal uh, by, uh, ectopics, they are dangerous. Now couplets are paired VPCs. So what you are seeing here is normal complex is here, normal complex is here. Two ectopics coming in here. So what you are seeing is normal complex here, normal complex here, but three ectopics come in here. So their names are couplets or triplets. What you should remember is triplet is dangerous because two things coming then you are getting a normal complex. But here three are coming in here. In time this can increase from three to more than three it will become weak. So they are very dangerous. Triplets are dangerous for an ER physician. Now here what you are seeing is this is a number of ectopics are more than three. They will become ventricular tachycardia. Now there is a classification for uh, ventricular ectopic. This is called as Lorentz classification. You can see zero means rate of zero is no ventricular premature complex. One is occasional or isolated ventricular premature complex. Isolated means uh, once in a while you are seeing or a monomorphic ectopic once in a while you are seeing that is ventricular premature complex. What is the normal uh, procedure we do in emergency room is ask the patient to walk for few minutes if possible. Then if the uh, number, numbers are coming down, it's a uh, benign ectopic. If the numbers are increasing, then you have to be very careful. Grade 2 is frequent ventricular ectopic complex. Uh, more than once per minute or more than 30 per hours, they are uh, slightly uh, dangerous. Three onwards, it is dangerous. Multifocal ectopic, we already discussed that. Multifocal ectopics are almost uh, pathological. Then, for A, for B, repeated VPCs or couplets or salvos more than three. Why? Then, onwards, patient will go for VP. So, that is a grading system, but what I have told in previous slides is if you are getting occasional ectopics or even if the number slightly increase, you ask the patient to walk for few minutes. If the numbers are coming down, it is mostly benign. If ectopic numbers are increasing after excess, excess, it is abnormal and if you are seeing multifocal ectopics, they are abnormal. If you are getting couplets, triplets or uh, more than that, it is abnormal. So all these things are abnormal and even if the patient is symptomatic on one or two ectopics like he is telling I have palpitation don't uh, uh, don't allow him to exert because that is also a significant a symptomatic ectopic whatever may be the number that is also abnormal. So we have discussed about ectopics. Ectopics are not always dangerous. When we are seeing ectopics we have to see whether they are not multifocal, they are not bigeminy, they are not trigeminy, they are not couplet, they are not triplets. They are always it has to be unifocal and when we ask the patient to exert that number has to come down. If the numbers are increasing or if they are symptomatic, we have to be very careful. And if you remember the classification what we have discussed, long classification, that is 